Hey guys, happy Saturday. Thanks for coming in tonight. Hello, replay viewers. I appreciate you being here. And hello, catch viewers as well. I, I'm so happy you're watching these replays. If you want to join me live on Periscope, download the Periscope app and search for Penguin and Fish. I'm here pretty much every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. Thanks so much, guys. I see you all popping in. We are going to finish the this block, block 18. Zoop. by uh, Lena's gift by Pat Sloan. I'm hoping we can finish it up tonight and maybe even draw where we're going to do some of the little embroidery that we discussed uh, a couple days ago. So I'm going to flip you around. Hey there, guys! <laughs> Hope you're all having a fabulous Saturday. It was 80 degrees out today so i got the short sleeves on again which is pretty awesome i'm pretty excited about it um so tonight guys we are going to finish block 18 of the splendid sampler lena's gift uh by pat sloan um so all we have to really do is assemble it we have to cut down the squares a little bit and then we're pretty good um I am not sure if this is working. Can can someone write a comment or something? I'm not sure that's popping through. Okay, good. <laughs> it was pretty weird. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, there was nothing, which is kind of unusual. So, all right, good. We're good to go, good to go guys, still, so that's great. Uh, oh, it's warmer than Arkansas? Yeah, you know what? This this time of year, it really fluctuates. Like, last week, we had, you know, it was 30 degrees all last week, you know? And now it's 80 and wonderful. We sat outside all day. Um, it was pretty beautiful. Beautiful and short sleeves, man, that's welcome. <laughs> I, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, so, if you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm a fabric designer and the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery. Oh, 80 here in Indiana. Oh, just just like here. That's awesome. 50s in Maine. Oh, it's a heat wave. You know, I would have said that a couple days ago. 50s would have been great a couple days ago when it was just 30, which was kind of crazy. So, all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around. I'd like to just get cracking on this right away, and I'm hoping we can get it all done tonight uh, because, first of all, there's a new block coming tomorrow, so it would be nice to have this close to done. Um, I, I do want to add a little bit of extra embroidery. I know we talked about that a little bit, um, like a little bow to kind of wrap around as if it's like a little bouquet in paper, and I'll show you We'll talk about that later once we get that far. But I'd like to at least get that drawn on. We won't get that embroidered tonight, but uh, we can get it drawn on, and then we'll just we'll finish it when we can, I, I guess. So, all right, I'm going to flip you around, and we will get going. Let me know what you guys are working on tonight. Okay, I got all the pieces here. So where we are going to start is um, we left off by sewing all these and uh, um, cutting, trimming them down, and now we need to trim them. So these all need to be two inch squares. So uh, let's just go like this. There, now we got a little, a little more space. Oh yeah, so, so yesterday, <laughs> yesterday I didn't have my scope. I went to, uh, I went to this performance, I'm going to just cut cut and chit-chat at the same time. So I'm going to, I have this diagonal on here, and I am going to line it up there. It's snowing all day in Denver. Ah, man. It was like that a couple days ago here. It'll come. It'll come, Denver. It'll, it'll get warm there soon. All right, so I'm pretty close to the two inches, so I'm not going to be able to really trim too much. Um... We'll do this, and then we'll flip it around and do the other side. Oh, I, I gotta get it on that line, the diagonal. But yeah, so we went to the Cathedral of St. Paul, which is in St. Paul, which is the capital of Minnesota here. Um, I, I live in Minneapolis, so St. Paul is just, you know, a short drive away. Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul. And... Uh, uh, we had a friend, or one of John's friends, he was taking a class, and this was one of his classmates, was in this, and that's how we found out about it. Uh, he was one of the uh, people in the choir, but we went to the Cathedral of St. Paul, which I've never been to before, which is massive. 
and gorgeous. So stunningly beautiful. Like you could just take a tour of that for the day and it would have been a completely um, fulfilling day. Um, but they were screening the 1928 silent film, uh, The Passion of Joan of Arc. It's actually, I think, a French silent film. So it's, I don't know, La Passion de Jeanne d'Arc or something. So that, I, I think that's what it was, actually. So there were subtitles, English subtitles on it. Uh, but we watched that, and in the background... It, they had composed, like, so someone uh, must have gotten a grant or something to do this, but a composer uh, composed a whole orator oratorial, or uh, I'm not quite sure what it's called, but where they have the orchestra and, and like, opera singers and a choir and all that. So it, basically an orchestra, and then it had, like, a soprano, mezzo-soprano, you know, baritone and tenor guy singing. Um, uh, with a choir in the background, plus a full orchestra, you know, doing their whole orchestra thing um, all together. So this whole thing was scored, like he scored it to this movie, this silent film. And so they were doing that live while we were watching this black and white silent film from the, from the 20s on... Uh, on a, on a big screen in inside the Cathedral of St. Paul. And it was one of the most amazing things I've been to, like, ever. It was so stunning and moving. And uh, the film, I had never seen the film before. And wow, is that a masterpiece. And the music just, you know, it was written for the film you know, modern, like it was, it was, um, it's not modern, but it was written, it was written now, like it was written, it, it was written, you know, within the year or whatever, right? Um, and, uh, so they had, he wanted to do something, the composer wanted to do something with, you know, uh, like a religious something or another, I don't quite know all the backstory, but, um, then he found this film and it then wrote, he wrote the music, uh, to go along with this film from the 20s, and it was stunning, 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 just amazing. Um, they're going to do one more of it. So how we found out about it was uh, my husband was taking a class, and one of his his uh, classmates was in the choir and uh, um, told, told them about it, told his other classmates about it. So that's why we knew about it. They're doing one other performance. So if you're in the Minneapolis area, I think it's on the 22nd. Um, they're doing one more performance. This time it's at the Basilica of St. Mary, so that's in Minneapolis, which is another. That, that I've been to before. That is um, a beautiful, beautiful um, cathedral, church-like place. You know, huge. One of these all, like, these huge, something that you'd find in, like, Italy, you know, like that kind of, that kind of cathedral church. Um, beautiful. Just stunning and beautiful. Um, so if you are in the Minneapolis area on the 22nd, I highly recommend going to this. It really was one of the best things I've, I've ever seen. It was just wonderful. And I, I kind of, I want to watch the film again because that was a masterpiece in itself. But uh, I'll be sad because I won't have that music with it. And the music just really made every moment just better. But the film was so interesting, especially when you think that it was from the 20s. You know, and when you think silent film, you think kind of, you know, all these kind of characters kind of running around in slightly faster motion and doing these kind of interesting, weird things in these big stories. This was almost exclusively close-ups on people's faces. Uh, I would say, like, 75% of the shots were close-ups on fa people's faces, but from interesting angles, from, like, down, looking up, um, and it just, it was pretty interesting. So the story is, um, it's... It's the trial of Joan of Arc, basically, from the Catholic Church, I guess, basically. Uh, and so all these uh, leaders in the Catholic Church kind of, she's on trial, and so they're asking her these questions and trying to trick her into saying something that will, um, you know, make it be like, that, well, God didn't come to tell you to do all this, see, because of this, this, and this. 
you know, it, it, it's just fascinating. Like, it's such a beautiful movie, and with this beautiful music and the beautiful singing and... I don't know. It was pretty incredible. And in the beautiful venue, and, and you know, the whole thing is, like, the Catholic Church is coming down on her, you know? And we're in this gigantic Catholic cathedral church, you know? So you have that whole aspect of it, too. And it's just fascinating. But anyway, if you're in the area on the 22nd, you should totally go to it. <laughs> so that's what I was doing yesterday. And uh, then we went out with... Uh, we met up uh, with John's classmate afterwards and, and went out and had sushi, which was delicious, and had a nice evening and stayed up late, <laughs> which I don't usually do on, on a Friday, you know? So it was, it was fun. I'm a stay-at-home person, so I got out, got out of the house, guys. <laughs> all right, so next, we got all these trimmed to the, the two inches. Uh, next, we're sewing this into a half square triangle. So again, we're just we're just plopping these on top of each other, right sides together, and we're gonna draw that line again. I think I'm gonna do it on this side. This is slightly lighter fabric, but yeah, I mean, I just want to do more of that stuff. Watching things like that, and I mean, it was packed too. Like there was the whole entire place. There was like over a thousand people there. These squares seem huge, I know, uh, especially after working with such small pieces on some of these blocks. These, these are like huge, huge blocks. It's just, it's just so fun. Huge, huge pieces in this one. We definitely would have been finished with this yesterday and doing embroidery today if I, if I wasn't, if I didn't go to that thing. So, I mean, like, this is definitely, I think, one of the fastest, uh, quickest blocks. I could see doing a bunch more of these just for fun. I like these quick ones. I mean, it's super fun. Uh, yeah, amen, right? Uh, uh, it's, I love doing these blocks. Okay, we're gonna just stitch around, just right along this, this line here. I love, uh, I love doing the complicated blocks because I'm just learning so much from doing them. But you know what? Sometimes you just need a breather and it, these nice easy blocks are great for that. Still working on 17. Working the weekend though. That's, yeah, exactly. 17. That one was that. That's an example. I learned a lot from that one again, and and just you know, it's fun to do these intricate things and know that you can do it and and all that. Uh, but yeah, sometimes it's nice to just take a breath and do some of these ones. I still um. I don't remember what block it was, but it was that one with that kind of square, that diamond in the middle, and it was kind of diamond, and then, then the little pinwheel edges. Uh, that one I'd still really love to do a children's quilt out of it, so I might do that. Um, oh, speaking of, I am going to be, I mean, this is kind of a, speaking of, it's kind of half of a connection, but um, I'm going to be uh, visiting my parents uh, I'm going to be leaving Wednesday, and I'm probably going to be there through Sunday, or, or driving back on Sunday. So I will do some, uh, 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 some off-site um, scoping soon, and uh, I'll, my mom's doing this blended sampler too, so I'll show you. I'll, uh, we'll look at her quilt and stuff too, and I'll bring all my blocks, and uh, I'll scope from my parents' house. For a couple days, we're going back um, to visit uh, because it is. Oh, I should do this to the dark side, which is. I suppose this is kind of the dark side, right? I don't know. Um, but my dad is retiring, and he's having his retirement party on Thursday. I'm gonna go the other way. I think I had more. I think I kind of sewed to the scant side on this side, so I think I'm, I have more leeway to get on the corners here. But yeah, so we'll be, um, we'll be at my parents' house for his retirement party, um, and then just hanging out for the weekend and stuff. But I'm gonna scope from there, and I'll show all my mom's blocks. She's doing her scrappy. So I'm, I'm, I would call mine scrappy just because I'm using um, fabric that I didn't use and have never used before. I didn't buy it, but um, she's doing a full-on scrappy where she's actually picking 
from her tiny scraps and making her quilt out of that. And it, and it's looking just awesome. So it'll I'm kind of curious to see to see what um, hers is looking like. A quarter inch each side of the line. Um, not for this one. Oh wait, I don't think for this one. Use fabric and place right side, draw a date in the line, so a quarter inch. Oh, it is on either side of the line. Dang it, you're right. Oh, I could trim it down. Okay, you're right. <laughs> That's what I get for just looking at the picture and not reading the directions. You are totally right. I was supposed to sew on either side of the line, um, but this is fine. We'll trim this off and I will just cut this down. You are absolutely right though. I did not do that right. <laughs> so we will, um, we we're all chatting, I know, right? Anyway, fine. Well, um, I'm going to cut this down. I'll, I'll use my quarter inch here this time. Yep, I did not do that. Oop, I did not do that right, guys. But luckily we don't need the other one. These are scraps. Uh, so Yep, I was so I was supposed to do what we did for these, which was sew on either side and then we get like two sewn blocks. But I didn't do that. I just sewed on the line, which was wrong. But again, it, it works still. Um, I just have to cut it down now. So it needs to be uh, four inches. Oh, wait, trim to. Oh, yeah, see? I totally skipped the directions. Draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of one square, so a quarter inch on either side of the line. I did not do that. Cut on line, press toward the dark fabric. I didn't do that. Trim to three and a half by three and a half inch square. So yields two large half square triangles. One will not be used and I will not use it because I did not make it. Um, so I gotta trim this to three and a half inches. All right, so we're trimming way more than what we needed to because I messed up here. But oh well, at least we didn't need that other one. So I'm gonna just uh, trim a little higher and then I'll trim the other side too. No harm, I only need one exactly. We just have a couple more little scraps. All right, that was three and a half inches, right? Okay. I got paranoid for a sec there that I cut it to three inches, but nope, I, I have it at three and a half still. All right, that looks good. All righty. I think we are ready to sew everything together. Woohoo! I kind of want to make more of these. This is this one's just fun. You know, like I said, it's totally like a breather um, doing doing some of these. Okay, so the next step in the instructions basically say so these three together. You're working on. I'm working on your blog. Oh, Lisa Piecing. Oh, yay! Well, that's exciting. Um, be sure to check out my catch videos, uh, which are at catch, um, K A T C H dot M E slash penguin and fish. Uh, and there, there I can, I, there I do all of the, the rest of it if you need help with embroidery or anything like that. All right, so sew these three together, sew these together, and sew the two to there. I can do that. All right, we'll do these three together first. Um, this will be a test in my scant quarter again, so let's just move these over here and we will get going. Oop, I'm falling off the table here a little bit. Actually, I'm going to scooch this over. My stand is going to fall off. All right, there we go. Let's sew these guys. Let's do, I got to keep these in the right order. Let's do these two first. I, I really like this fabric because it's pretty sturdy. And it's nice to have that as kind of a little base. All right, right up against, I'm really pushed up against this, this postcard here, which is our scant quarter. Um, we, we discovered that if I just kind of glide against it, I'm not, I'm not in far enough. So I got to really push it. I, I should really probably put, um, move this this way like half a millimeter or so, um, but we're gonna just push right up against it. So quiet. 
quiet now during this. All right. Oh, hey, I, I think we can we can just do these ones right away. Um, okay, so these go this way. Then we don't have to bring our leader around and, and cut and trim and all that. I can just, these are the two that from the side, from the left side that I have to sew together vertically. Uh, so we'll get those started and then we'll take this one off and then sew the last piece onto that one and all our pieces will be ready to put together then. Yeah, I'm gonna be out of town when that other, when the other Joan of Arc thing is playing, um, cause I'll be I'll be in um, by my parents' house for my dad's. Uh, I was gonna say my dad's graduation, but <laughs> my dad's retirement. <laughs> oh jeez. Uh, but if I was in town, I would go see it again. I mean, it was it was really, really amazing. All right, this goes here. I think I'm doing this right. Yeah. I get paranoid um, that I'm putting my blocks in the right spot. Alright. I'm so quiet now, it's so funny to me. I can't speak during the, uh, during the sewing anymore. All right, so we got our, this is our top piece and our side piece. You know what, guys? I did my nails right before this scope, which was the stupidest thing ever. Like, I'm putting so many dents and creases, and, and all my nail polish and stuff is getting old, so it's getting thick. So now I got all the bubbles in, plus it's not drying. I gotta, I gotta do a whole, you know, life-changing magic of tidying up on my, uh, on my on my nail polish I gotta just get purge and get all new stuff oh so that's nice <laughs> that's what the little blurriness of uh, Periscope helps with but man that was just stupid I don't know why I did that oh I know why I did it is because I didn't have time to do it earlier oh yeah sushi beat okay I gotta write that down oh, I don't have my pencil oh here I'm gonna write it <laughs> I'm gonna write. Oh, here I found, found a piece of paper. All these things, these funny things I gotta remember. Such a beat. Try Sally Hansen dry and go drops. Oh, that sounds interesting. Dry and Sally Hansen. Dry. Oh, I forgot what it was. Dry and something drops. Dry and go, dry and go drops. Yeah, I had some, I had some, okay, I'm going to press these. I had some of that quick drying stuff for a while, but I feel like, um, it was awesome. It was so awesome to dry them right away, and I think maybe I got to go back to it because of that. But I feel like sometimes it just made, um, it, it chipped off right away, like it made it not last as long. But I think it's kind of worth the quick drying now because it it seems like um, it seems like right before uh, like it seems like I don't have any time to do it before right right before this for some unknown reason reason these two squares give me a lot of grief these two squares well let's let's see what happens here so um, this will be a check of my scant quarter to see if my scant quarter was all right. Or Jamberry nail wraps. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I want to start investing in, in that. I, I kind of like my little nail polish routine. I just need it to dry right away. So, yeah, I keep that block. I'm going to, what number is that block that kept messing me up? Block 13. Is the scrap star, block 13. That one was the one that caused me a whole pile of trouble. All right, so we are not exactly the same height. We're off by, I don't know if you guys can tell, um, by maybe a millimeter, and it, it's kind of stretching, which makes me think, think that I didn't sew a straight seam. Like, I started out a little wider here and then got thinner here. 
Um, we're gonna just deal with it, but in general, I feel like I, I do that often. So I'm starting wider and then ending thinner, and that's making making uh, um, it just kind of warped a little, like it goes like that. That's why it's called a scrap star. You create a lot of scraps, yeah, exactly. Man, that one was a bugger for me though. I, that one, uh, that one I feel like I had to work hard through it for some reason. Oh, oh, you kept putting these together wrong. Oh, that's, that's always the bummer. I'm always paranoid about that too. Just, um, oh yeah, I think we're right. Putting it, putting it together, um, in the wrong order. Wow, now this looks, well, we didn't press it yet though. So these get pressed outward. Okay. Pressing outward. Let's flip back up. Let's do it this way. Outward and outward. Just bring the music over here. There we go. All right, let's just give it a little press on the front. Luckily, these two fabrics that I'm using are probably the, the sturdier of the fabrics that I'm that I've been working with so that's been helpful I think see now this one's short so I should be matched up here here let me tilt you guys down so this should be this seam and uh, this end should be matched up <laughs> and we're not all that good on that so oh wait no it shouldn't Oh wait, maybe it should. No, it shouldn't. I think I'm gonna be off there too. I don't know, whatever. We'll just keep going. <laughs> it's not gonna, because we'll have a seam. We'll have a seam here, so I think this might be too big. So I think I might be too scant still in general, guys. So I might I think I might have to move. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to move my um my little business card over a hair. But I'll just do that later, but I think I'm gonna just have, like the tiniest hair, I think I'll do it. But we'll we'll do this first, right? Then we'll see. So, okay, this sews to this, so let's do that. Yeah, I have a feeling that, whoa, sorry guys. <laughs> Dropped you there. Okay. Yep, yeah, that's right. I have a hunch that this needs to be over just like in a literal sense of hair, just a tiny bit farther over. Because I would just like to touch against it, I don't want to really push against it. Uh, this is my one that's all warped, but we'll, we'll sew to here and then try and adjust it a little bit over. We'll see how that goes. All right, got my little stiletto. Maybe your card isn't square. Uh, that could very well be too. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to square the card, just because it, this isn't flat. It's flat to here and then it angles downward. So I can't lay anything flat against here. And then when I tilt it down, I feel like I'm getting a little off. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure how to square it. I tried to get it square here, which seemed like a potential area for it to be square, and I think that's pretty good. Um, I, I'm just not sure. <laughs> so I think, uh, I think I might just be a little too far over with it. All right, let's get this guy back here. Oh, they become misshapen with use, too. Yeah, that makes sense. I haven't used it for very long yet, though, so that shouldn't be quite yet. Oh, you know what? I also forgot that we had a... I was supposed to watch for points on this one, so we, we, we clipped a point, but that's okay. I'm not too worried about that. We clipped this guy a little, but it's not very noticeable. We did get this to kind of match up, so that's good. All right, let's press it, see what we got. Okay, this gets pressed 
to the big side. I'm excited for this block. I just really like it. I like the idea of it's holding the flowers and I like the idea that we're gonna add embroidery to it. I just like it. I'm getting to that falling in love stage, guys, where, where we start to put them all together and things get good. All right, yeah, see, so we are a hair, oh, you guys can't see. So we are just a hair over here, which makes me think that my scant quarter is too scant and I need to move the card over, but we're gonna just, I'm not gonna worry about it. We're gonna just keep going. All right, so what comes next? Okay, we did this. Okay, now we sew all, we sew the top to there. And then what comes after? Oh, sewing the bottom, sewing this to here, this to the here, and then that too, okay. Get it! This comes first. Let's do that. Put your square ruler down. My square ruler? What do you mean? To kind of measure how what we're doing here? So these should be one and a half, I'm thinking. Yeah, see... I'm a little off there. I don't know, let me zoom in, I think. That's gonna, oh wow, there we go. Sorry guys, wow, that was a really quick zoom in. So one and a half, yeah, see, so I, I'm i quite a bit off there. And if this one is, so this one's pretty good. This one, oh, you guys can't see. Oh wait, this one's, okay, so this one's one and a half plus our quarter inch. So this one's perfect. This one's great. This other one here is, is what's off. So our seam somewhere on this guy wasn't great right, right here. Um, so yeah, something to still work on is my seam allowance. And I think I just, I, I'm too scant yet. So I will have to, uh, I'll have to fudge over my card just a hair. So let's, uh, let's, let's just keep going. I'm not going to adjust anything now. I'm not going to fix it. I'm just going to keep going, especially on a block like this, which is pretty simple. Um, I don't, you know, if I clip a few corners, oh, well, I'm fine with that. All right. So this has nested seams and we've talked about that before, but it's where the seam allowances go in different directions and you can kind of butt them up like they physically butt up against each other. Oh, thanks so much, LaShonda. I, I'm really liking this one. It was fun to choose colors and stuff or fabrics with you guys too the other day, um, two days ago when we started this block. That's always kind of, that's always kind of the biggest thing is like, oh man, what, what fabrics am I going to use? And then after that, it, it's kind of fun. Don't forget to aim for the point. Oh yeah, this point here. Thanks, thanks. Uh, thanks, Janelle. I was not thinking about that, so that is very nice that you said that. <laughs> All right, so I am aiming for the seam where this seam crosses with this diagonal seam right at that point. And then uh, in theory, we will get the point of, um, the point matching up or not being clipped, not being clipped off. And I think I might clip it a little, but we'll be okay. Alrighty, let's add the leader on there. Okay, turn that off. Let's see how we did. All right, we are, um, by butting up the seams, nesting the seams, we got a perfect point there, which is awesome. And then how do we do on this point? Uh, that looks pretty dang good too. So let's, let's press this. I don't know if we really, okay. So because remember that this was bigger, this was, um, too big. 
what that did is now our end that point didn't match up because um, the seam was too scant. So um, so we did have not a matchup because of our poor measurements of the seam allowance, but um, all these other things matched up just fine. So let's press that. Oh, what I should have done, it was sewn that and then sewn this one right away, but oh well. That'll just be an extra step for us. All right, which direction do we press this? Press it down, all right. I am liking it so far. Yeah, all my not sewing straight though, like when I have kind of like those wobbles where I start thicker and then end up thin thinner, that's making um, my whole thing a little wobbly. Um, you know, which isn't what we want either. So that's that's something that I need to work on. Or at least trimming it trimming it before I sew so it doesn't put wobbles in it so I have like straight edges must say choosing fabrics the hardest thing for me yeah that's um you know it's a decision you know and decisions are are hard you know what I mean like I think it comes down to that um, it's just it's hard to make that final decision on what you're doing you know you'll make this block tomorrow and we'll attempt to finish the next block too oh awesome I do love the color combos you have. Oh, thanks, LaShonda. Uh, yeah, tomorrow we are getting the next block already, so that's that's kind of fun. All right, so I'm going to sew this to here, and I'm going to sew this to here, and then we'll sew the whole thing together. And oh, I'm liking how it looks. So here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to... I think I'm going to put a bow on here. Um, like it's wrapped in paper, like how you guys said yesterday. So I think I'm going to try that. Mixing prints is tough. Same problem when I did a lot of scrapbooking. Oh, interesting. Yeah, what you almost have to do is pretend that they're not prints and just look at the value of it. So like, this is really light. That's, I mean, what I'm doing is like, okay, this feels light to me. This feels medium to me. This feels dark to me. You know what I mean? And then you can start to like look at contrast and stuff like I like that this is really floral and this is really pattern but initially I'm looking at the, the value the lights mediums and darks and if you squint at it you can kind of see read the values a little bit better so if you start there like pick up your favorite fabric that you want to start with that you want to work with anyway and then look at the value after that um, the lights and the darks, and then you can play around with that. I mean, that's kind of, I guess, what I would suggest for um, mixing prints. Don't think about the prints. Think about how light and dark they are, and then, and then after you have that, then you can kind of rearrange and decide after that. Okay, let's get these together. Oh, no problem, Chanel. Yeah, I mean, it's it can be difficult. I mean, it can get really, really overwhelming for sure. But if you just narrow it down to, okay, I'm just thinking about lights, mediums, and darks, first of all, then you can at least divide your fabric into that, and then you can make a better informed decision on, on that. like, then you can start thinking about color and pattern. You know what I mean? Like, when you have the lights and darks, at that point you might think, like, oh... I like the pink, the, the pink in this light color is similar to the pink in this medium color. Maybe I'll use those two together versus two random things, you know what I mean? Um, but start with the value and, and work from there if you're having trouble. Alright, this is the last um, little piece and then these two pieces get sewn together and we're done! Except for the embroidery. We're gonna still do embroidery on this. Alright, I think my yep, flipping my seam seam up a little. Alright. Let's get 
take a black and white photo. Oh, see, there you go. That That's another another way. If you just can't get past the color and you want to see the value, to take a black and white photo of it and then see what it looks like. You kind of get that same effect by squinting, but um, definitely taking a black and white photo um, reveals that really well. And you know what I find, um, especially from doing these scopes and stuff, I find that even taking, a, even looking at it through your camera, that one level of division from actually seeing it is helpful. Like when I looked at it through the through the camera, it looked much better than when I was looking directly at it. Uh, even even that could be helpful. It's weird, but it can help. Take a photo and then like look at it from far away. Um, or take a couple photos of two different things and then, you know, like in your gallery, you know, so take take a like if I wanted to try this fabric, I'll take a photo of it with this fabric and then switch this out and try a different fabric and take a photo. And then you're in your gallery of photos, you can see the two kind of next to each other and get a sense of like what you like and you know, which one you like better too. So that's that's a way to kind of do it too. Alright. These this guy gets pressed downward and this one doesn't say. Oh this one, yeah, this one gets pressed upward. So downward and upward. We are almost done with the sewing. <laughs> Keep forgetting that we're gonna do the, we're gonna do the, um, oh wait, I did that the wrong way. I wanted to press down, downward. All right. And this one I wanted to press up. So we can nest the seams again. That's looking good. Ah! Man, when it's sewn together, it's just, I fall in love with it. I like it. So we got our seam, we got our point, our point right here is perfect on both sides. So that's pretty exciting. This one goes up. Okay. I want to look at my stitches still. Oh, I'm just I'm just looking at my tension again. My tension looks I don't know. Tension's funny. It's it's good and then all of a sudden it gets weird and I think I think we're still good. It's kind of just I think it's good. It's just kind of hard to tell on this fabric, I think, but I think we're still I think we're still holding together. All right. Great. All right, now all we have to do is match this up. I think I am gonna give myself a straight edge here though, because this is the one that went over, and I'm gonna mess myself up. Do you hold the iron on the fabric for quite some time? What setting are you using? I am using the setting for the fabric, so I'm using the linen cotton fab. The I have um the the um, linen cotton setting, so I'm all the way up really, and I am just. You don't want to, you know, it might look like I'm doing this, but you don't want to move the iron all around, all over the place. You just kind of want to get it to the right spot and press, and then move it to the next spot and press, because wiggling it around can warp your fabric and, and that sort of thing. So I'm just, I'm just putting it down until, you know, I think it's flat and then checking it and, you know, I don't want to have it down there forever because I don't want to scorch my fabric either, but I'm not, I'm not really too worried about scorching it. So I'm just giving this a little trim here. This is where I went um, too far. Have you cleaned the lint bunnies out of your bobbin area lately? I have not and that would be a good idea and you know I could do that uh, today too because I I happen to have my a can of air here. I could just blow it out um, but that's a good idea. You had to clean out the lint from your machine. Oh, you know, yeah, that is because that could be causing funny tension things too. Yeah, you're right. You know what? We're gonna do that before the new block comes out. Um, before the block comes out tomorrow. Yeah, I, I, I have the air right here. Maybe when we're done, um, before we start embroidering, maybe I'll just blow it out here quick. This is the last seam. Boop -a -da -da. Okay. Oh, I should have. 
Dang, I should have done this the other way so I can watch my points, but oh well, I have already started. I should have flipped this around so I can make sure that, because there's a point here with this this guy, and I wanted to make sure that I got that, but I I uh, sewed on this side, so I can't, I can't see. So we might have just clipped another point there, but oh well. It happens, I suppose. Oh man, I just poked more nail polish off. My non-dry nail polish. All right, snip this guy up and bring it around. All right, let's see if I snipped it off or not. <laughs> let's get a focus. Oh, I didn't, I didn't snip it. I should have gone a little further. <laughs> oh, well. Um, I didn't clip, I clipped this point, but I knew I was going to clip this one because this one was, this row was too big. But yeah, oh, well. Decent enough for me. How did this, did we match up down here? Yeah, that point looks pretty dang good. That was the nested seam again. Nested, nesting your seams allows you to get really good points there. All right, let's uh, also change my needle when stitches get kind of wacky. You know what? That's not a bad idea. I mean, I haven't changed my needle um, at all during this blended sampler here, and I have learned that that seems to be something you should do more often than what I've been doing. So let's press this, and we are done then. Um, and then uh, we'll draw on the we'll draw on the embroidery. I might get the air though. I think it's right over here. Yeah, I see the air. So let's we'll blow out the machine quick before we do the embroidery. I don't change mine until it breaks. Oh yeah, you know what? That's exactly. I'm right there with you, Cora. I don't change the needle until it breaks, and apparently that is not right. <laughs> apparently you want to change the needle pretty often because it gets dull, and then it, it pushes your fabric around and stuff too. At least that's what they that's what they tell me on the interwebs these days. So um, you know, it might not be a bad idea to to switch out the needle. Um, it's not gonna hurt. A needle is only good for four to six hours? Oh, well that's interesting, Diane. So, I mean, I'm clearly well beyond the four to six hour. Uh, so why don't we do that? We will re-prep our machine for tomorrow. But here is the block! Oh my gosh, I freaking love it. I love all the blocks, seriously. But, all right, so what I want to do is, um, we talked about how it looks like, um, like it's flowers wrapped in paper. And we talked about maybe doing a bow, and I was thinking about it every four to six hours of sewing, change the needle. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do that. Uh, always afraid I'm gonna lose an eye. Oh, funny. All right, so I'm thinking, um, well, you know, I might as well draw it on now since I've got it going here. Um, I kind of want the, a bow around it here, and maybe a couple extra little stitches, like someone tied like baker's twine around it. And I'm thinking I'm gonna do it in white. I was thinking it'd, it'd be fun to bring in a color from here, but I'm thinking white would probably be the most, like, grabbing, just as a contrast. And, and I don't know, I think it'd be really pretty against this blue, so I think I'm gonna do it in white, and I'm gonna just freehand freehand one on here. So I want like these little lines. I'm, I'm just using a water erasable fabric marking pen. So I'm going to draw on here and then um, I'll just dab it with water. I was thinking orange or, or like yellow or something from here, but I really think white is that classic, just gorgeous, stark color that on like this dark blue like that. And I was thinking, oh, you know what? I think I want to do that. So I'm going to draw just a couple little couple little lines on here as if someone wrapped it around a few times. Yeah, timeless, exactly, Cora. So, let's see. Um, we'll just, I, I'm just kind of, I don't know, I'm just kind of just sketching. I don't know how this is going to look, but kind of a little wobbly, a little different on each side, and then let's have... 
let's have um, a little bit of um, what is that? Little strands come off of it a little bit, and maybe we'll we'll put like a little French knot right in the middle there. Will you do chain stitches or stem? I'll probably do back stitches, honestly, just cause, just cause that's kind of my thing. I just kind of like, I like back stitches and they're easy. Um, I might, maybe I'll try a split stitch. Where did I put this one? Yeah, right here about. All right, so I'm thinking kind of like this. I'll, I'll zoom in to, to show you guys. It's kind of hard to see. All right, so this is this is kind of what I got going on. It's it wraps around a few times, and then I'll put like a little French knot right in the middle there, and then it comes down, and this one's kind of wobbly over here, like it's baker's twine, you know. And then this is coming down here, and this one floats up here. So I think that is the plan. I think I'm gonna stitch it. I'm not gonna use a hoop. I don't think I need a hoop um, when I'm just in this little area. We'll just. Uh, We'll just try and keep the tension pretty normal or, or consistent. Um, but yeah, I think that's the plan. How does the block measure up? That is a good question. I did not measure it. Let's see if it's six close to the six and a half inches, which means we're pretty good with seams, just not great yet. Oh, I don't know, that looks pretty dang exact if you ask me, whoosh! I think I've, this has not been this exact ever. And look, my, my points are right on the quarter inch too, and that's something to look at, um, you know, because when we sew it together later, it'll be at that quarter inch. How are these looking? Oh, pretty good on the quarter inch. Let's see, do we have another quarter inch one? Oh yeah, these. Not too shabby! Awesome! All right. That is great. So tomorrow we will have a new block. So I'm not gonna be uh, I'm not gonna embroider uh, quite yet on that. Next next time we have a free moment, like if we get a block done early, we I'll I'll start this right away. But I'll I'll have it drawn on, so it's ready to go. But this means I have another unfinished block. <laughs> so we'll have to um, remedy that at some point. But here I'm gonna shoot over here quick and you know what I just realized I think I have taped I have taped this in so I can't I can't actually take this off I'm gonna have to take the tape off ah which sucks um let's see how do we how should I take care of that I think I'm gonna I'm gonna have to cut I'm gonna have to cut you know, I'll kind of show you guys what my issue is um so I've taped this postcard or this business card up here and to take um, this off to get to my bobbin, it's in the way. <laughs> so I'm actually going to just cut this, this off right here. There we go. And now I can take it off, but I'm going to have to tape it back. But that was poor planning. All right, let's, oh yeah, look, I can, there's stuff down here already. Oh, you know what? I gotta... I gotta... Take this off before I can take the, bo the bobbin out. There we go. So we got... We just changed the bobbin, so luckily we got a lot on there. But I don't know if you guys can see in there. Let's, um, I'll get the air and then I'll show you guys. I just happen to have the air on me. We were doing some repairs in our kitchen today and, and required the air. So I'm going to take you guys off the stand. All right. So there we are. Let's get in focus there. So it's not too fuzzy, actually. We're not too bad, but I'll spray it out anyway. Get some little fuzzles out. Do I shake this? I think I shake this. Alright, I think uh, we're pretty blown out in there. I 
think I think let's tell it done. Let's get let's get up here a little bit. Here. Out of here, fuzzles. Okay. I'm calling us fuzz free. Use a makeup brush. So what I've heard people do or or seen is uh, they use a pipe cleaner and just run like a fuzzy pipe cleaner through it, but I don't have a pipe cleaner. But maybe if I ever see a pipe cleaner again, um, maybe I'll go grab one. I wonder if, maybe there's one at my mom's house. So when I, when I visit mom, maybe I'll find a pipe cleaner. I don't know why I would find a pipe cleaner there, but you never know. <laughs> Well, I'm excited. I'm excited to show you uh, my mom's blocks, if she'll let me show you guys. And, and uh, um, then you can see her machine. She has a Bernina um, with bells and whistles. <laughs> Mine uh, does not have... Oh, man. What am I doing here? Something's off. Um, my machine here does not have any bells and whistles. So, I am caught on something. Oh, I'm caught on the actual bar underneath there. There we go. You can find online section to take your bob and bob and case out. Controversy over canned air. Yeah, I I can't remember what the controversy is, but I've heard that too. Do any of you know what the deal is? Like, people not liking the canned air? Does it put chemicals in the machine or something? Or, I guess I don't know. Is your presser foot up? Yeah, the presser foot's up now. Blow the, oh, it blows the fuzz further further into the machine. Okay, well, I didn't know that. Moisture being left behind. Oh, see, all these things. Blows dust into your machine. Okay, I guess I won't do that again, guys. That all makes sense to me. Um, I will uh, look for a pipe cleaner, and we will do it that, that way from here on out. All right, let's take this tape off. That's going to be kind of difficult, I think. All right. So, I guess this can just stay like, oh, no, I kind of do need, I need that, that extra little bit up there, otherwise it moves. Bummer. Um, okay, but I still do need to move this over a little bit. Old brushes? Oh, that's true. I think I have some old brushes. I just have to get them all out. We'll, we'll do that. I'll get some old brushes. See, you learn- I know, right? I learned something new with every block, I'm telling you. Like, I'm in a very literal sense, I have learned something new with, with, with every block. Oh, yeah, I can't replace your sound machine, that's for sure. I'm, I'm not going to replace this guy until it just bites the dust. And I have a pretty good- I have a pretty good, um... Uh, sewing machine guy within walking distance from me and he surfaces this and stuff and I think he's not gonna ever let this guy die he'll just uh he'll put a new motor in or something but he'll he'll keep it going forever <laughs> and sewing machines tend to last a, a long time too I'm thinking so all right guys I think that's it for tonight I'm gonna flip you around Hey there again, guys. So here's here's the size comparison. It's just like a cute little bouquet of flowers. <laughs> and so here's the little bow that we'll be doing. Uh, we'll embroider that on uh, whenever we got the chance, guys. So new block tomorrow. I don't know. Oh, I got a little fuzz. I don't know if there's going to be any... Um, I don't know if there's a preview or anything out right now, but maybe I'll peek before going to bed. <laughs> but here we go. Yay! All sewn up. I love it. I'm just so excited about it. I, this is one that I could do a bunch more of, and I think that'd be awesome. It'd be super fun to do. So, all right. Thank you so much for coming in again. I will be here tomorrow, same time, 9.30 p.m. Central. Thanks again, guys. Have a great, great Saturday evening. See you tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>